Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. So today what I want to talk about is how to get more color into your portraits. And I'm taking a class with David K. Lobenberg, uh, which I put a link in the last video. I'll, I'll try to remember to link that again. And so let's talk a little bit about how that's happening. First of all, you have to find a good photo, a photo that has some uh, probably natural sunlight is really helpful. So there's some shadows because yesterday I failed miserably because I was working from a snapshot, a snapshot which was of somebody indoors and I had cropped it from a photo which had three people in it down to one person and there just wasn't enough information. You know, you have to be able to see the structure of the face. So this is much better and so things went better. On the dark side of the face, the shadow side of the face, I'm using cool, cooler colors, uh, blue, green, and violet. And I will hit it with a little bit of warmth in the places that appear to be bright white, but of course they're not white because they're in shadow. You know, anything in shadow has to be darker than anything that's in the bright sunlight. So that is, so I'm compensating for that here. And now I'm using um, warmer colors on the sunlit side of the face, which tend to be oranges, reds, pinks, and yellows. Well, of course, yellow. Couldn't get a warmer color than yellow. The paint that I'm using is about tea strength, not right there where I'm using the hair. That's probably about milk strength because I'm not going to be doing a lot of layering there. But where the shadow falls in the face is definitely tea strength. And I'm doing my usual triad work, not blending, but placing colors near each other in order to define a shape, but letting them run into each other. So you can really identify each individual color. It just adds, adds a lot more dimension to your um, to your painting. And, and watercolor is just so made for that. You know, it wants to marry itself. <laughs> it's egotistical. It wants to marry itself. Uh, but really what it is is water. You know, water, if you put water next to water, as you know from your palette, you know, if you put color that's too close to another color, before you know it, you look down and it's bled into another color. So it's all really about water control, isn't it? So much of this is. So I'm still on the first step. The hat was really fun to do because that was, you know, easy. Um, I used three colors to do this portrait. It helps with consistency if you use a limited palette. I used ultramarine blue, Hansa yellow from Daniel Smith, and also a permanent red. Uh, no, not permanent, permanent rose. Uh, those two were Windsor Newtons. Uh, it helps if you, uh, it just helps organize and um, keep your painting more unified if you do use a, a limited palette. And I'm happy to do that. But it, I, don't, I don't know how much that matters. It's just something that, that I do. Um, so let's see. I, have, I can't remember if the dryer came out. I think, I think it did. I think I'm in the second, second phase now. Yeah, I must be in the second phase now. So again, everything is going in and it's T-strength. And I'm finding any place where there's a definition. You know, that corner of the nose is really important. And then I'm using water to thin it out, which I do not usually do. As you know, if you watch this channel, I'm always talking about not using water to get the value that you want. But in this case, sometimes I am. So I am not obeying my own rules. But it seems to be working in the case of these faces, where everything sort of has to be uh, lighter in terms of tone anyway. But no flesh colors. You know, I'm inserting, you know, you would call a color value swap out. So I'm very concerned about the value, but the color is, uh, I can swap out the color if I want to. But it has to make sense. You know, the darker colors on the shadow side of the face and the warmer colors on the lighter side of the face. It kind of makes sense. Although every once in a while I will cross, go across and, and violate that just to add some interest. Now the paint is more the strength of about Let's see, we're beyond milk. We're getting into cream here, cream. So it's, it's much thicker. And that's because we're getting to the dark, the absolute dark parts that I know I want to define. So there's some purple going in the eye there, or violet, I should say, going in the eye there. But I want to keep it somewhat soft. So I take my brush and add a little bit of permanent rose which is just slightly lighter, you know? I'm just, I'm really, rather than spending a lot of detail on the whole face, what I'm doing is putting detail in where the, um, where the eyes are, 
where the nose is defined and ultimately where the mouth is. Um, or really, the photo kind of tells me what to do. It sort of says, wherever something's dark, that's where I need to pay more attention. And so I will. But I'm trying to also have some soft edges. So every once in a while, I make sure that the brush has no paint on it, and I will lick the paint back up. You know, just take a scoop at it. There, that's a good example of it there. But it's all about controlling the water, leaving the whites of the paper white, and using unexpected colors. And it's really kind of fun. But again, you know, finding the, um, finding the correct photograph is really helpful. And I, I was frustrated with that yesterday, but it's my own darn fault. You know, I, I, I know well enough not to do that. But as we all know, every once in a while, you know, as writers say, if you write something great, you know, you've you got to edit it and murder your little darlings. Well, I had to murder some little darlings yesterday, but it didn't work. And that's the nature. That's the nature of painting. Every once in a while, something will just not work. Oh, gosh, that's the worst feeling. But you got to get up the next day and try it again. Try, try again. So, as I always say, remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint's wet. Please join my YouTube channel and um, tell a friend about it. That'd be really helpful. Most people who watch these videos do not subscribe. It would be really helpful if people did. But there we go. Really important there on the teeth. You know, that's a good example of where white in shadow can't be white. The white where her teeth are in bright sunlight, they can be white. But you got to compensate for that in the shadow because anything, anything that's white in the shadow has to be darker than white in bright sunlight. So that's the uh, little bit of demo of the portrait for today. Like I said, remember to keep the whites your paper white, your paint's wet, master value mix for color. See you next time. Bye-bye.